Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today we're gonna play some more Final Girl. We are continuing our playthrough of the Lore and Scenario Book. The Lore and Scenario Book, which you can find linked down below if you don't know what that is and you didn't watch the previous episodes. Uh, we're playing through basically the movie series of Hans the Butcher. Um, kind of seeing how he evolves into each movie at a different location. Different rules, different cards, different setups. Uh, if you want more information on that, I recommend you watch the first video. It is linked down below in the video description. Uh, you'll find the playlist there of all the Final Girl playthroughs we've done on the channel, and you can watch those there. Uh, get more information on this book. But we're going to play through The Vacation from Hell, the third movie in the series out of five. I'm waiting to see when it jumps the shark. Um, you know, maybe nothing was good past the first movie because the second movie kind of sucked. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, <laughs> so it's a little rough, all right? The second movie was a little rough uh, at Slaughterhouse. It was a little rough. Um, but yeah, maybe the vacation from hell is, is, is more enjoyable. We'll see. <laughs> so yeah, hello everybody. Hello, welcome to those joining live. Hello to you watching later. Hello, hello. Um, yeah. Uh, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Must be going to Disney World. <laughs> Vacation from hell. <laughs> uh, hello, hello, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, so I scheduled the next episodes. I scheduled the rest of these. So there's only two more after this one, I think. Yep. Yeah, there's uh, Traps, Killers, and Clowns, Oh My, which I scheduled for Friday in two days from now, if you're watching this live. Uh, and then the next one is scheduled for Halloween day. So, uh, my time at least, uh, called the final nightmare at Maple Lane. So, uh, we got those scheduled. So if you want to set reminders for those, you can already just go to the streams, hit notify me, uh, or if you've subscribed, you can turn up your notifications to always notify you and then just turn them down after. Cause obviously we probably won't be playing final girl for a while after. So. If you're not interested and you don't want all the alerts when we go live, and we go live all the time, uh, playing games you might not care about, totally understandable. You can turn them off later. And if you forget, oh well, maybe you accidentally find a different game that you might like also. So yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Shouldn't the third one be in 3D? <laughs> if I had those red and blue cheesy glasses, uh... Unfortunately, those ones from the cereal box I got just didn't last that long. Uh, yeah, they didn't last that long. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So I guess we'll read the story. Uh, then we can go over the setup for this one. We need to read um, about the Sacred Groves location, which I've not played on in a year two years i uh, three i don't even know at this point i'm not sure 
I'm not sure when I played this last, but it was a long time ago. And I was just reading the rules for this morning, and hopefully I get them all straightforward, but you guys can keep me on task. Um, and we'll read them together, make sure we understand. And there's a couple uh, event cards we have to worry about uh, that have timing. Oh, at least one of them has timing that we gotta like kind of remember to do. All right. So the vacation from hell. Here's the story. Here's the story. The vacation had been Lucy's idea. After everything that's happened, we need a break, a chance to reset. Lori was sure this had something to do with Lucy's newfound religion, quote unquote. But she wasn't even going to try to say no this time, Lucy continued. The groves will be our chance to find inner peace and holiness. Yep, definitely a little religious thing. To Lucy's credit, the groves were quite beautiful and Lori could feel the calming effect on her soul. Eventually, they found their way to a place called the Holy Groves and Lucy insisted on praying there while the Holy Master made his journey. Lori didn't know what the hell she was talking about. She tended to space out whenever Lucy went on about particulars of her religion. So she left Lucy to her prayers and went exploring. When she heard the screams ring out, over the gently rolling hills, Lori knew that he had found her once again. Damn it, Lucy, what have you gotten us into? Would she ever be free from Hans? Would she ever truly find inner peace? Dun, dun, dun. So the final girl will play with Lori again. Uh, so we are playing with Lori again. The setup is family day. Items, we're going to set it up as normal. We have one event. Holy man. Holy man. Holy man. What kind of insane pilgrimage is this dude on? Uh, so the holy man. The victim farthest from the killer is now the holy man. Holy man. The holy man will not follow you. Every upkeep phase, the holy man. Uh, once move the holy man one space towards the killer. When the holy man is on the same space as the killer, immediately move him from the board. Remove him from the board. If you're in his space, if you were in his space. Okay, hold on. This is a continue. When you move him from the board, if you were in his space at the time he was removed from the board, I believe is what they're trying to tell us here. You'll decrease the divine wrath, which is an annoying little side effect thing in this one. Uh, to one, all the way to the bottom. And we'll read about how that works. Uh, if you were not in his space when he left the board from being killed by the killer or whatever, uh, you actually increase, in this case, the red lightning bolt, uh, which I believe was killer wrath. Uh, we don't touch that because we're not playing with the killer from this box. But the yellow lightning bolt uh, manipulates the divine wrath, which is related to the location the sacred groves are playing on. So in this case, we'll just jack it up by 10, and we don't have a choice of what to jack up. It's just that meter only goes up to 10, so however high we're on it, it's going all the way up. Uh, if the holy man leaves play, discard this card. So I don't know if I should be trying to get this guy off the board by saving him as fast as possible, or if I should follow him around and try to get this to happen so that I can reduce the meter. I don't know. Is that super powerful? Is that something we'll need? How will we be on the divine wrath meter at that time? I don't know. I don't know. Recon Pro, what up? Um, I think it's time to find a new bestie. Yes. Yes, Lucy's got to go. Uh, we, we need to be done with Lucy, but unfortunately, she's uh, reprised uh, you know, her role here in the third movie, so we have to deal with it. The writers just don't want to seem to write her out, so unfortunately, we got to deal with it. Uh, so that's the holy man. Holy man. Holy man. Holy man. So, uh, that was the Holy Man. So we got three cards from the location. We can look at those here quickly. Um, but they might not make it in because we have 12 cards again this time. We're shuffling them all up. Three from the location, nine from the killer. Uh, they're all specified in the scenario, and then we only draw 10. So some of these might not show up, some of them might show up. So all victims on a adjacent to a sacred space will move there. Then we increase the Divine Wrath by the number of victims at those sacred spaces. Then this guy goes running after me or the killer, whoever's closer, and does some slicing. Okay. Punishment of the gods. This will fire off on the meter here. Um, some bad ability. Do it again. Move this guy towards um, myself or a victim. And slice him up. Then draw an event. Hmm. 
Taco, thank you for the $5 super chat. For 3D tech upgrade and Divine Wrath sucks. Yes, uh, yes, I, I will invest in some 3D tech. Uh, but yes, Divine Wrath sucks. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you so much. That will go towards some different tech, like the tech that uh, just arrived today that uh, we got to try to work in a Mel's painting stream setup. <laughs> Thank you for the support. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, uh, so... Here's the problem I have. Why is this drawing an event and we only have one event in the whole scenario? Should I not be revealing that event already? Because part of setup we reveal event, no? Or is there special rules that stop that? Nope. Nope. Yeah, we only have one event, so I don't know, do we just ignore that event uh, symbol on the bottom there? It's kind of confusing me. Or am I supposed to keep the holy man hidden until we draw this card? Sonia, hello, welcome back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to treat this. I I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. Because uh, part of setup is revealing the first event card, right? Right, right, right? Or am I forgetting that? Is that not a thing? I believe it is, and I think we looked this up recently. Oh, man. Or am I supposed to just ignore stuff on there that can't be done? That's probably what I'm supposed to do. But it does change things, right? Because that holy man could be really annoying. Uh, and if he doesn't show up or shows up at a certain time, it could totally change the play of the game, right? And then the other one is this one. Which is just more victims, more divine wrath. It's annoying. Okay, so that, that's in there. And then... The killer events we can look at quick, uh, there's only a couple with this stupid annoying icon, but if you notice, uh, on the Divine Wrath card, uh, which will have a little token moving up and down it based on what's going on, uh, lots of little uh, hockey masks, uh, goalie masks on, the, on these ones, and lots of reduction of um, time, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have a fun time playing this one, I, I can tell already. But yeah. Uh, so it's a lot of victim killing, it looks like, again. Oh, there's some that target me. Um, but yeah, so again, we're gonna shuffle all these together. And only draw ten of them, so who knows which ones are in and which ones are out, right? And, uh, yeah, we'll go over the Sacred Grove stuff. I'll try to figure out the event thing real quick, but I'm pretty sure that holy man gets revealed like right away, which I already set him up on the board and everything. Um, just to kind of have it ready, but maybe you're not supposed to do that in these ones, but there's nothing in the rules for the Lauren scenario that tells you like treat the event differently and change setup, I think. Okay, so let's remove two of these. There's our tarot deck. Okay. Where's the events? Let me read the setup, I think. It was in setup, probably, right? Setup games, page seven to eight. I think, like, the last step. Yeah, the last step is freaking... Shuffle location event cards. Place them face down next to location board. Draw the top card and follow the instructions on the card. Possibly adding new victims or introducing a game effect. Blah, 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 blah. Step 18, the final step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would happen as part of setup. So I guess we ignore the event draw on that one. Because there is no more events. We're only playing with one event. So... Yeah. Should have put that in the special rules unless... Yeah. So special rules for this scenario. Place the girlfriend event card from Camp Happy Trails. Uh, that's not it. Uh, above the board, place your special victim meeple in the Holy Grave space, which I've already done. She will not follow you. Or move from Holy Grave space until the Holy Man is no longer on the board. So it, yeah, this this does make sense then. So reading the special rules, me, we have to have him in play. We have to have him play. So so we'll just ignore the event draw that's on this card. Um, yeah, perfect. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Once I read these special rules, that all makes sense to me then. So I need to get the the Holy Man. Probably just save him if I can, right? Problem is he's going to move towards the killer, so it might be really annoying. Oh, but does he follow me? Does he follow me? Oh no, he doesn't follow me either. 
but I could save him if he if he stopped if he stopped in an exit space. I'm pretty sure I could just go in the space and then say he's saved. Or he could get killed. He could get killed before he actually reaches. No, that wouldn't make sense either, because once he's in the killer space, he's gone. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he enters the killer space or the killer enters his space. It just says when the holy man is in the same space as the killer. Gotcha. Okay. I'm trying to make sure we've got this holy man down. This holy man is going to be a pain in my butt. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I need to think for a bit. How am I going to approach this? Oh, yeah. Also, uh, we're playing with uh, this is the dark power. So, we got Sledgehammer Massacre. For every uh, little knife symbol, Hans attacks you and each victim in his space once. This is no good. And we got Butcher Bloodlust as our finale if we get there. So we see yeah, whoever's closest. He's, uh, oh, it raises Bloodlust too. Uh, 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 whoops. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. I think we can. Let's uh, read the rules here. Yeah, I was thinking that too. It might say that in the front of the Lawrence Scenario book. I just forget. But uh, yeah, it's like if you can't, I think it probably says that in the regular rule book. Like if something happens on the card that can't happen, just ignore it. And it's like probably covered in the base rules of the game. Um, but for me, I'm just like, ooh, did I get the wrong card in there? But I double checked the card name, so that is the right card. But that's what it makes me think is like, oops, uh, I built this with the wrong cards or there's a typo. Okay, so oh, let's go here, actually. So I placed the Divine Wrath card in the play area. I placed a tracking token on level two. I placed the Sacred Grove's Bloodlust track directly to the right of the killer's chosen thing. And this uh, basically adds some effects uh, messing with this track over here on the right um, when the Bloodlust increases. So we'll deal with those as it, it goes up. And it says line it up with the bottom of the killer's bloodlust track. So I'm putting it like this. Okay, so as we go up here, we'll just read across and do that ability. Uh, set the Sacred Grove's finale token aside. So the finale gets even worse. Uh, actually, I put it over here. It gets even worse where it's like messes with that, that, that um, this track, if we get that far. Uh, include both atonement action cards in the action tableau. So we have this card now to also think about. Uh, again, ignore the red lightning bolt because we're not playing with the killer from this box, uh, but the yellow for the location. So it's a way for us to mess with that number and kind of reduce it. Or we fail and our horror goes up by one and I will rage quit at that point uh, and we'll lose two time. I mean, what? I mean, what? <laughs> uh, cost two. Cost two to buy that. Cost two. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh yeah, let's set up our items. Oh yeah, there's more rules probably, right? Oh yeah, here we go. Divine Wrath. Uh, whenever you're instructed to increase or decrease Divine Wrath, move the tracking marker up, or sorry, move the tracking marker on the Divine Wrath card up or down, the appropriate number of levels. The marker can never go below one or above ten, so ignore any fluff that makes you do that. Uh, whenever you're instructed to unleash the Divine Wrath, check your current level on the Divine Wrath card and apply its effects listed there. Whenever Bloodlust increases, in addition to applying any effects on the killer board, that's what we talked about already, you have to then fire off the stuff that's on the, the track. Um, some items or card effects will allow you to reduce Divine Wrath, but the primary way is to purchase and play that Atonement card I just showed you. And the finale, if the finale is triggered, we have to attach that little thing on which we talked about already. Uh, and then sacred spaces. Sacred spaces are a new type of space on the sacred groves location board. The burial ground, sacred shrine, and holy groves are all considered sacred spaces. The more victims that are located at sacred spaces, the angrier the gods may become, and the higher chance that divine wrath will increase. My god. So we need to stop these idiots from going there, but as you saw, there's some cards in there that could pull them in automatically. Um, which stinks. And 
and there we go there's our setup uh we're playing with the family day so we got two 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 and two plus two and two and i made this guy the f the holy man who's furthest from this i think based on how i counted one two three four wait one two three four one two three one two three yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, but she, yeah, that's an extra one. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, forget the girlfriend obviously can't be it. So I, I just made this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, a lot of rules and stuff on this one. Uh, I appreciate any help. Free for the yell at me. Don't 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 be shy if you have if you have questions or you're like, ooh, I don't think you did that right, or don't forget about this, or whatever. Uh, again, I haven't played this location in a while, like a long while. Um, so we're going at this blind and uh, kind of seeing how we can do here in this scenario. And uh, yeah, maybe if it ends uh, pretty rough, we maybe uh, reset and try again. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. This one's interesting. Definitely interesting. This atonement card. Like, I forget how much of this we have to care about. Also, with the mix of cards, like, does this actually go up that much? Maybe it does because of all this. So we we got to get some of these victims out of out of these grows. So e e our girlfriend is in there, right? So it's like we got we got to get her out, but she won't follow us. And she won't she won't follow us or move from there. Until this guy's no longer on the board, so either he gets to the killer or we save him. So like maybe maybe he moves this way, but probably not because this way's quicker. So unless the killer's like up here, so I I I don't know. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah, I don't think we can ever get the holy man off the board like that. Maybe there's holy man help in these items. I don't know. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, there's we got five items not in the game. Hopefully we got a juicy number of weapons. We got a whip, pepper spray, and out of order signs. Okay, so we got the welcome center has the whip. Just call me Indiana. Uh, if you damage an enemy with the whip, you may move them one space. Whoopsh. Okay. That was a little extra damage. As long as you're in your space. We got pepper spray. This stuff can supposedly stop a bear in its tracks, so it should work like gangbusters on this freak show. We got a one-handed item. The whip was how many hands? One? Yeah, one-handed. If the killer is in your space, you may discard this immediately and end the killer phase. Oh yeah, I like this. Ignore the remaining movement of uh, movement, attacks, and other effects. Yeah, this is good actually. Especially late game if we're having trouble to save our butt. And allow us to have like one extra attack on the killer or something, you know? Like, not have to waste our, uh, you know, or if we don't have uh, guards and stuff. Yeah, this item's actually really huge, I think. I think this could be really big. Hmm, okay. Just thinking. Uh, lost and found is where that is. So that's down here. We got the welcome center over here. And then we have out of order signs. What the hell are those? See, they have tokens. What can we do about this? A little misdirection goes a long way. For one time, you can place or retrieve an out of order token on a connection between your space and an adjacent one. Place and retrieve. Place or retrieve an out of order token on a connection between your space and adjacent one. Victims will not pass through unless they're following you. Huh. Adam, thank you for the super chat. Here's to help our final girl win. Uh... Adam, I hate to break it to you, man, but I feel like the luck gods and the dice gods, who may be the same gods, I don't know, but then there's the card draw shuffle gods. I don't know which gods. But none, no bribing I've done in the past has ever worked, just so you know. So I'm sorry, but I do appreciate you trying. Um, but yeah, they don't take bribes, I've learned. Uh, bribes is not a valid form of dice mitigation and luck mitigation. Um, but I do appreciate the support either way. Adam, thank you. 
I mean, your heart, your heart was in the right place, but uh, I'm sorry to break it to you. I'm sorry. I've tried, man. I'm thousands of dollars in the hole, and I still can't, I still can't, uh, you know, control the dice. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, yeah. But uh, I, thank you. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Uh, Patrick's got a question. Does the Lauren scenario book have multiple scenarios for all the killers in season one? Or does it has just Han's story? It has all of them. Think of this as a way, uh, not this book. Think, nope, not this book either. <clears throat> Too many books. Think of this as a, a movie series for each killer, a way for you if you own the whole series, all the stuff in series one or two, and they're going to have it for three, I'm sure, and four and five and however long you guys keep buying the same game over and over again, um, including myself, I'm a sucker, <clears throat> hypocrite. Uh, yeah, so uh, it basically has a way for you to play with each killer if you wanna play their whole story on every location. So it's just a way to mix up all the content you have. So you can play as Hans, he has a full five story playing on one, two, three, four, five different locations. Then you could play as like, you know, Freddy Krueger's uh, wish.com version over here on you know one two three four five different locations that come in those other boxes and uh, it has a story and a setup and it keeps going so it also in this book has a bonus uh it has stuff about uh the terror from above so that little vignette pack if you have that plus a write-up for all the final girls in the series their background story plus tips on how to play them better supposedly um so yeah so every killer has their own little series so if you're now about to ask, Rob, are you going to play through more of them? Uh, I'm going to tell you, stop, stop, please don't. Please don't make me. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, not anytime soon, probably. But uh, yes, you could play through all of them. I just picked Hans because I want to try the book out. But again, I wish it was a full campaign series where like, you know, things that happen in one movie transferred to the other gameplay wise and setup wise. And, you know, I could earn things to carry forward. And But it's really just a way... Think of it as just a way to pull content from two different things you own. If you're like just kind of bored of just mixing them together and shuffling everything together. This takes like a more focused approach uh, with specific setup rules to play each scenario. So, I mean, even if you owned a couple sets, you could still just find the matching pairs and play those scenarios standalone. You don't have to play it like a all in a row, but it does recommend you should because then the background story kind of makes sense and it kind of flows and... You know, you might be fighting different final girls along the way and stuff like that. So, um, like, we just played with Lori, like, the whole time so far. But I think the other ones might change uh, as it goes along. Yeah, yeah. I see this one, actually. Yeah, this one, uh, for example, Dr. Fright has his whole thing. And uh, he starts against uh, Sheila. And then uh, the next scenario is fighting against Nancy. The next scenario is fighting against Alice. So this, it, gets, it gets more uh, crazier, I guess, as it goes, maybe. Um, but yeah, we're just trying Hans, because I want to try the... F I just figured, like, where to start first, right? Do I start with the Season 2 one? Start with this one? I thought, let's go back to the classic. Most people probably own Hans the Butcher, maybe bought it at retail to start, to try the game out. It's the recommended starting one. So I figured, let's just focus on the first killer and just kind of have some fun with it and... You know, see how it goes. Uh, but yeah. So that's the plan. But yeah, you, you could literally buy one of these for every set and it should cover all of it. So it's just another way, like I said, to get your content back to the table. Play all the stuff you paid for. And instead of it just being so random, it's just kind of focus. It's cool. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Adam, definitely, like, I could be playing this game with just the two sets I own. And obviously Series 3, I, I backed it all. Uh, the gameplay stuff. So... I just don't think I back this though. I don't know if I could add this on or if it was in the all in pledge or something, um, but I could probably buy this on their website later if I cared, like if we got that far. Um, but yeah, with all first three series, right? Like if I do one series like this a year, like it's gonna take us four more years to play through just series one, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's a lot. So I definitely can choose to play it later or if like, we're just inspired to play Final Girl at another point during the year and stuff. Because it's a great solo-only game. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I definitely like easy peasy. And it's probably the way I'd only play it going forward. So if we're going to play this again next year during uh, October, right? Yeah, maybe we could do a poll and just pick a killer and we just play through their series. From series one to, or maybe we'll have three by then, you know? 
uh, and just play one, and that's the way we play it. But if Series 3 shows up in, like, June, I might play it right then, you know what I mean? So, like, who knows? We'll see, we'll see. Oh, I have C-Series 2. I have Series 2. I have a physical book for it. It's in, like, that um, prop kit thing that I had, the purple boxes. Yeah, yeah, it's included in the purple box thing that I got. I have it for sure, though, because I was debating playing from it. I just don't have it at the table. Uh, it's over on a shelf, but I don't feel like getting it. But yeah, I just don't know for Series 3. I know when I first looked at Series 3 when it launched, they were kind of being uh, a little weird with it. But I understand why, because they just want to deal with less SKUs to create less shipping uh, and logistical headaches. It's like, if you bought the gameplay only pledge, you don't get any of the extra add-on stuff. You can't pick add-on stuff, really. Uh, if you want any of that stuff, you have to buy the all-in, like, full box and storage and all this pledge thing. And I, I don't believe in that, and I'm not going to support that. So uh, if I feel like playing the Lauren scenario later, I will just order it separately off their website or buy it at a convention or something, or just not lose any sleep if I can't find it at all. Because who cares? But uh, it's a nice to have. But yeah, I, I would have definitely added, put it as an add-on. Maybe they'll change their mind. Maybe that's already changed. I, I don't check the campaign page every day. But uh, it's probably over by now, too. I have no idea. But late pledging, I'm sure. Maybe I'll be able to add it in there or something. Who knows? But who cares? But yeah, it was weird. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah, you're thinking of the, the death one. Yeah, the death one's like digital. Yeah, the death is where you like read deaths based on what happened where and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what else we got to do? What else do we have to do? We read the setup for the location. We got everything on the board. We got our health. Again, we're going to do the whole draw tokens from the bag. I put all the black tokens in here. Uh, so when we reveal this, it's, I just put like a regular cardboard blank one here. But when we when we get down to that, when we if we get down to that, I should say. Uh, I will draw a token randomly from the bag, same with when we get here, because it's more fun, more suspenseful. Um, what else? We're on the right horror. Time is six. We got our cards, our starting cards. Okay. Uh, we hate this track. I hate the holy man already. Girlfriend's annoying. <laughs> Never heard someone say that before. Uh, but yeah. So we got the whip, maybe. We try to grab the whip. Whoosh, and pepper spray, both would be great. So searching I care about, and sometimes I don't. Uh, sprinting I care about if we're trying to go save victims. Uh, getting victims out of these sacred places, like here, and here. I can't do anything about her right now. Uh, but maybe trying to save one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that sucks. Uh, one, two, three, right? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But being down here helps us searching. Also being down here, we're close to the killer, which kind of sucks, right? If we go up this way, we're not as close. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Adam, thank you for the other super chat. This is not a bribe to the mitigation gods. Nope, not a bribe. LOL. <laughs> Just attaching this to the form with a clip, uh, a paper clip and sliding it across the desk. Not a bribe. Just, just attaching it to the form. Uh, when, Rob? We have faith in you. No, yeah, yeah. If. If is the correct terminology when playing uh, uh, this dice rolling game. Oh, also, reminds me of dice. Anyone who's been watching our Eldritch Horror playthroughs lately, I saw at the end, I think, of the last episode or one before, I was mentioning how, like, based on dice luck, and people were telling me, Rob, it's the same dice rolling as in, uh, in Final Girl. You can practice with Final Girl dice in Final Girl and try to get better at dice rolling to be more prepared for Eldritch Horror. There it is. It's not a bribe. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Um, what was I saying? The uh, 
But that, that, I thought of it after, I was like, wait, I know it's successes on five and sixes are a thing in, in Eldritch Horror, right? In Arkham Horror and all that. But this is different. This is not the same. So yes, a successes are on uh, fives and sixes or whatever, okay? But this little symbol in this game, for some reason, makes me okay with playing a dice game. And, and I was trying to think like, why? But it's that thing that I always say in games, and, and it comes from this. When I bitch about a game that's just full of dice and really full of luck, and the dice or luck mitigation sucks, I love that. There's Yogi with a super chat. Thank you so much. We're screwed. <laughs> Agreed. Um, yeah, yeah. We are screwed. Uh, we're screwed. Yep, yep. The difference in this thing is the way I can spend a resource like cards from my hand to buy a success, okay? Kind of like in Mansion of Madness converting, it's more like Mansion of Madness luck, right? Where you have those, those uh, investigation results, you can spend a token, a clue, to turn it into a success. That is beautiful. But in Eldritch Horror, it's like, you could spend an action to take a reroll token, or spend a clue, which is required to win the game usually, for a reroll of one die. For a, you're spending like a whole action to get a focus token. A whole action, and you only get two a turn. A whole action to maybe, Reroll one die with a 30%, 33% chance of a success with a five or six, okay? But in this game, even with the reroll of the close call, which is like equivalent to those, I think, because you're spending some resources to have a reroll chance, but you can even spend more re resources to reroll all of the results. You can also spend cards from hand, which are also resources from time, to uh, buy successes, basically. And you have cards that you could play to increase your luck, okay? Uh, or increase the amount of dice you're rolling. Which, there are some similarities there. But the whole idea of saying it's like exact same as Final Girls, exact same as like Eldritch Horror and Arkham Horror with the fives and sixes, wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. That this, this whole three and four side of spending cards, that right there is what sets this game miles apart. And what makes me, someone who hates the luck, hates the dice in games, hates stuff out of my control, it, it reigns it in enough to make it fun and interesting where I have very meaningful decision points. So don't ever compare that craptastic game Eldritch Horror. It's not that crappy. It's pretty fun, actually. But it's not on the level of, like, Final Girl with this whole thing. So don't, don't ever. And, and I'll repeat this rant maybe if I remember. Tomorrow night when we're playing Eldritch Horror. But yeah, not on the same, not on the same level at all. Not on the same level at all. But yes, in that game, if I could say spend an action or discard an item to set a die to a success, okay, spend a resource, make that heavy decision point of do I spend this resource, which is big, to like make sure this test succeeds at some level, that's a, that's a cool thing. That, that's like a powerful thing. It, it feels very rewarding. It's very fun to make those decisions. Um, that's good game design. That's good game design. There's still luck, but there's still control. And, and it's like, that's a balance that is like done well in the best of games. You'll find that. But uh, yeah. Some people just love chaos and just love to watch the world burn though. So anyways, there's my rant. There's my rant for today. There you go. All right. So let's play this game. Let's, uh, let's try to play this game here. Okay. What are we doing? What are we doing? Getting our horror down would be nice, but I think this might be one of those ones where horror is going to get crazy again because of this. Uh, this, this, and there's a little bit in here that we're just kind of happy if we're sitting in the, the white here. But if we get to the green, amazing, but I, I don't want to spend my whole time fighting to try to be in the green. So our girlfriend also, we can't have her really help us yet, so that kind of doesn't balance that out, which sucks. But maybe he's dead quick. And let's think if the, if the holy man dies and we go up to the top of this, it'll actually, if it fires off, make us discard all action cards except atonement and then decrease the divine wrath by the number of cards discarded. So if we have to discard like four cards, it's not even going down that low. Uh, which is crazy. That's crazy. That, I, like we would lose the game, I think, if that happened. If the holy man dies... And we're not in the space with the holy man. So that's a priority, I think. And hopefully it's not too far from our girlfriend. So we can go reach her and then use her extra die. 
to help us out because we're going to be rolling very few dice. Um, but maybe we can flip our card. That's that's achievable. There's lots lots of victims on the board, right? We saw there was a card that adds more victims possibly in the deck. It adds them at a bad place though. Um, but this guy's gonna be killing victims a lot, I think. So I don't know. I want to search. I want I want to grab one of these items. I, this is what I want to do. I want to search at some point. I need to get victims off of the sacred groves. I need to be with the holy man when he's with the killer. But again, I might not be able to line that up properly. I want to rescue victims. I basically want to do too much, and uh, it's not possible. The atonement, I don't think I have to worry about yet. We're also going to be kind of struggling with time, it looks like. Uh, so buying nice, big, juicy cards are not going to be a thing, really. So, yeah. Oh, Adam, come on, man. Adam says you have to win. I finally got to watch live. No pressure. Okay. Then I might, I might take, we might take two attempts at it. We'll see how long the first one goes, though. Okay. And that's why I'm taking my time here. We got to, like, plan and, and figure it out before we just run in headfirst. So direction will matter. So these victims here, uh, welcome center is where the whip is. But to get to the welcome center, I mean, I could go this direction up here. One, two, three, four for some rescuage. The only problem is if, if this guy, uh, I'll do a random roll, right? Who he goes after to kill first, right? It could be this space, could be this space. And if we gamble on going up this way, the killer's here. He's going to just possibly come and kill who I'm bringing to him. Um, hmm. And then the lost and found is the pepper spray, but that's a nice to have like later in the game. When he's coming at us, trying to kill us, we can stop him in his tracks for a turn, not have to waste guards or retaliates, maybe get them again, be able to attack him again. That's my theory. So whip is important. It's not needed instantly, but it's important. We also could go up this way, and if he goes this way, we could back this, go this way. Um, and I think the Holy Man will go this direction, probably. We'll see, though. One, two, one, two, three. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Rescue and search sounds solid. Yeah. Okay, let's go this direction. Top, we'll go, go uh, like, northwest, I think. That's the plan. Also, some focuses might be nice. All right, let's try to walk and see what happens. Let's walk before, or walk before we run, I guess, right? All right, there's the three and four I was talking about. Okay, so that's uh, no successes, but... Hmm... Am I okay losing some health already? Probably, right? Two time loss, that sucks. But, yeah. I think I'll do it, though. So we'll move one. Uh, we'll lose the health. And we'll lose two time. So already we're off to a great start. <laughs> Serenity now. Alright. Let's walk again. Okay, that die's gone. All right. Uh, just to be clear, that was was a success, but it's all good. I don't know the rule we're following today. Successes on the bounces? I don't know. Out of the tray? Uh, so we got one success. So we're going to move one space, and we can take two with us, right? Yep. Yeah. Let's go here. So we cleared out one of the sacred sites. Hopefully we don't get the first card that's like pull everyone adjacent to them in into a sacred site because that that would really hurt and then we lose the time. Next, we're going to focus. 
Serenity now. Uh, sure. Short rest and weak attack to get us a time loss and a horror reduction. I don't, I, I, that sucks, but, uh, I think I just hold here. Unfortunately. No, I'll throw this away for a time back. And then we'll purchase a sprint. And we'll purchase these two. I think. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Kind of went kind of overcommitted as I usually do on the first round. But it's just how I play it. I don't know why. I can't can't not do it. Alright. Uh so killer does a little stabby stab where he is. When does this guy move? This guy moves uh, upkeep phase, which is the very last phase, right after panicking? Yep. Okay, uh, so then we'll do tarot card. <laughs> At least you try. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Hans wants me. He always wanted me. Oh, no, he's coming after me. Uh-oh. Did I just get so close? I did. I'm an idiot. Yep. All right, well, this is going to be a quick one. All right, so he gets to move one each boot, one boot and two boot. Okay, he's in my space. Uh, where's that other one? Uh, there was something about him attacking both of us, but I think it was on this, right? So we don't have to worry about it yet. Yeah, that's that. Okay, so uh, yeah, just like that, we're going to lose two health, right? Hmm. I see. I see. He doesn't he doesn't kill the victims, right? Only if he had the choice. Like where it where it had the tie thing, right? Yeah, it does, it does target me. It says, uh, the killer will always attack victims in their space before the final girl, unless the final girl was, the, was specifically indicated as the target, which I was. I was the only target. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're down to two health, just like that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, awkward. Hmm. No panic. Uh, Holy Man is going to move this way. One, two. He's two away. Hmm. Maybe I should have went distraction, but I wouldn't have cards, right? All right, we're going to try to sprint. If we can get one... Two, three, that, like two at least would be good. We just need one success, please. Don't trip on that sprint. Yeah, I know. Uh, three and four, awesome. We just toss two for one success. Yes, I do. Okay, so that is uh, what exactly? That's move two and lose a time, right? So we're gonna bring these two with us. And then we're gonna bring them in here and we're gonna save them. I wish I had three movements so I could have used a move on my card to help those other two. Um, oh, I can take a sprint right now, right? It's risky though, but I like it. I like it. Or I could take a move, right? Cause this just says an action card that costs two max. Or a walk. We could take a walk. Uh, it costs zero, right? We could take one of these to our hands, even though that doesn't sound good. I think we need to take a health, though. This is the problem. Like, is he going to come at us again? Holy. Uh, this is rough. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, let's take a health so that we're not dead instantly when he attacks. Could drop horror one, or I can move one. I like the moving one. But I think I'll take the action card. Let's, uh, no, maybe not. Gambling on a sprint would be fun, but it could be game ending. Moving one space seems fine. Puts us in the welcome center. The welcome center is where we want to be to search for the whip. We're only going to have five to spend right now. We could get two extra to spend. So we could go up to seven. And that way we can buy like search, sprint. Guard might be good with him so close. Yeah. No, seven's not good because it's an uneven number and we don't have any close calls to buy. That's kind of a waste, right? Uh, hmm. Maybe we just move one. Oh, but this freaking guy, he's going to come after me, isn't he? This is tough here. This is tough. The thing is, I could just take the one move, and then we're in the welcome center. If he doesn't come after us, I'm already in the welcome center. I can start with a search. Uh, I can just do a basic walk to save these other two. But if he if he moves in here, uh, that's trouble. I I don't trust that I'll even get a success. I'm only rolling two dice, and uh, I don't want to waste it on a sprint. Then we have no sprints to buy, and I would like to use sprint. In a, with more cards in my hand. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the move one space. And then we're gonna have five money to spend, so we're definitely taking all these cards back. We're gonna take a search. We're gonna take a sprint. We still have a wasted time. I mean, I could have taken the sprint to hand and I don't even play it yet. Or, oh, I don't know. No, I'm going to stay here. And I'm going to do the, the fear reduction instead. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we can pull that off. And I'm just going to think he's not going to attack me. And if he does, hopefully we don't die. That's what I'm I'm doing. Okay. He stabs, no one's home. Punishment of the gods. Oh god. Oh god. You don't have I don't have to get a sprint, you're right. But now I've done it. Okay. Yeah, I probably should take a guard, right? But it's okay. Alright, so we're gonna unleash. Which fires this off. Twice, so we lose two time. Four, uh, twice, so we're down four. We're down to two. So next turn's gonna suck. Uh, then he is going to target. Ah, see, when I'm one away, that's smart, right? What just happened? Because he will go after these or these, but maybe we have a chance he goes up that way, right? And then he kills. All right, let's see, odds down this way, evens up this way. Evens. And he kills one. So bloodlust goes up. And then we increase uh, wrath by number of victims on sacred spaces. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh man, it'll make us lose four time next. And then we would draw an event, but we're going to ignore that, right? Holy crap, holy. Okay, so uh, he killed someone, so we're going to have some panicking happen. So that one victim that's in his space uh, goes in the three direction. 
Oh, right back there. Oh, okay, that's good. Serenity now. Okay, uh, back in the sacred grounds. Uh, then uh, the holy man. Oh, no. The holy man. No, I forgot. I didn't think he'd get there that quick. Holy man moves in. He leaves. Uh, yeah, this is like, what am I even doing in this game? This is crazy. So holy man's gone. He leaves. Uh, I wasn't there. So if you were not in a space, I increase uh, by 10. This goes all the way up to 10. So it's just sitting there waiting for us to blow our whole hand away. Oh my God. So now I like wish I bought atonements, but I didn't realize that was gonna happen. Stupid holy man. Oh, but now she'll, we can go get her now. She'll follow us. Holy crap, this just went like crazy bad. But it's not over yet. We're still alive. All right, our turn. I take it back. The last last scenario was amazing, by the way. This scenario. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Let's uh try a little walk action. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do a little walk action. Can't believe we only have two time. This is crazy, stupid. All right. Move one space, and we'll lose a time. Fantastic. Man, we could like end our whole turn here just by doing actions. This is garbage. Oh yeah, I should have done a focus first. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, we'll pretend that was focus. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was focus, guys. Uh, lose a time. This goes down by one. I'm being dumb. Then we'll walk. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. Focus first. When you're that close to the green, ah, uh, that was my plan, but... A one and a two. Fantastic. No rerolls, so... Oh, I'm supposed to roll three dice. I'm so dumb. I am dumb. I am tilted already. This is throwing me right off. Alright, here we go. A two, three, and a five. So one success could be two? Hmm. Hmm. I kind of just want one so I can get there and search, but throwing away two cards to move two could be good. It does the rescuing. Yeah, let's just do it. Short rest, weak attack, sure. I'll two spaces, lose one time, I'm at zero. Oh my god. One, two. Uh, oh yeah, we can move one space. We left that open. Move one space. And what's the other one being used for? We could take a card right now. But we're gonna, we're gonna, the problem is, um, whatever we do next, we're probably gonna lose time and just end the round anyway. So I gotta be careful here. I'll just take two time, I guess. That uh, buys me time, right? Literally. For two, you can rescue and get four time back. Oh yeah, I could have done it that way. I thought about the move to just put me there for the search. That's what I was thinking. All right, three dice on a search. One success, take the top item card from your space. So we have the whip and then uh, we lose the time. Hmm. I just need to get away from this guy, I think. Let's sprint. This is so bad. Three successes, you say? Uh, no, I wish I had that. Okay. Uh, 
three spaces and lose a time. One, two, three. Then we could save. One, two, three. Probably the better play because it gets two victims out of a sacred ground, right? Yeah. One, two, three. Doesn't, uh, here's the play. I'm thinking of like walking to get away from the sacred site with them so they don't just move back in. Or I could just focus, but I can only do one thing left. Or I could pitch one to buy time so I don't end the turn, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna walk. Yeah, yeah, we gotta skip next turn, I feel like, right? Because uh, this discarding action cards thing, like, we kind of want that to happen, but... <laughs> no successes, only one card in hand. Uh, but we can still move. And we'll take them with us. Okay, we'll lose a health. This is scary. And then we end the turn. Bam. So I have one card in hand. Uh, we have no money. And reset to six. Yeah. I don't know, man. Okay, he tries to stab, nobody's home. Draw. He kept swinging his hammer and killing and killing. If there are no victims on the board. Yeah, right. Not yet. Uh, otherwise, oh god. Oh god. Uh, so he moves one. Kills. This goes up. Horror goes up. Yeah, it's all that coming. Okay, then... Uh, this one's closest, so he'll move one more, but nobody's there. Nobody's in a space to panic. Upkeep, we don't have to worry about the holy man, stupid idiot. Uh, alright. So no upkeep face shenanigans. Our turn. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we could focus, but I mean, you know how that's gonna go. Might as well. Probably bad though. I could just pitch it for the seventh time. Hold on, let's think, let's think. What are we doing? What, are, what does next turn look like? Uh, it looks like we wanna save some victims, right? We wanna get to our girlfriend. One, two, to get to her. That'll let us roll extra die. So sprint is on the play. We just go crazy with the sprints and the rerolls. So we technically only need six, but if we play this, we'll lose a time probably, if not two. But if we get seven, we can then get a little more creative by buying like a close call with the one or atonement. Oh, atonement. Or distraction. Maybe we go distraction. Like atonement, I'm thinking because. If some weird ass reason we could ever roll three successes, atonement goes all the way to one. But even by half right now, we'd be big. Because we're at 10, right? Dropping it down to five, kind of huge. Uh, but I, I feel like we'd only get a one success and I'd be crying. Or less. If I got less, even worse. It's like, I, I don't trust this card unless we go like, all in on it, like planning or improvise, and like we need to be in the green and have to have rerolls in hand and 10 cards and all this stuff just to try to do this. I don't know, man. But if this fires off and rips all of our cards out of our hand and we just bought all these juicy cards, that sucks too, right? But like, what are we supposed to do? But I do want 10 cards in hand because if it blows away all of our action cards, uh, at least it'll reduce this by a, a lot. 
but I, like we lose a whole turn basically. So maybe I'll just buy more cheaper cards and that's the way we go. So if that's the case, I'll pitch this. Mm, yeah. Oh, I could just hold it actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, maybe we do it. Yeah, maybe we do it. Let's just uh, keep it. Yeah, we'll just hold. Hold, hold, hold. Hmm. Although if he kills one more victim, we're unleashing this stupid thing. Yeah. Yeah, let's hold it. Oh, this is so dumb. Yep, we're holding. Uh, so let's spend six. So maybe I should buy stuff that I don't... But, it, yeah. hmm. He'll probably go kill a victim, right? Because if he does, he rips our whole hand apart, discards everything except for atonement. So maybe we just go into that? Guys, this is uh this is rough here. I'm like trying to plan for like the worst, but I also want to like plan for like a decent turn in case it's not the worst. But then if it is the worst, I lose all those cards. I can't even get them till the next next round, you know. I'm not going to play this. Yeah, let's just hold, but I, I don't know what to buy. I'll take off all our free cards. I'll take these. Maybe I'll just take one sprint so we have another one to get after. Or do I just buy an atonement? Because we're going to lose it anyway. Yeah, let's take an atonement. For two. So we've only, oh, we spent three, we spent three. And then we'll take a sprint, I think. Two, three, four, five. Oh, I thought it told me it was three, never mind. I see, we could take this. That's six, that's six. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Yep. All right. Okay, killer kills in a space. No one's there. It's all down to this. Oh, all victims adjacent to sacred spaces move there. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, not so okay. Not not okay at all. I forgot that I was adjacent to it right there. Why did I think I was going to pull them to here to save them from going back to there? I guess it's still good. They're closer. They are the same distance from the exit. But let's see how bad this is going to get. Oh my god. At least it can't increase anymore. It can't get higher than 10. So that second line we're completely ignoring. Because it would have just jumped by 5 anyway. So maybe the holy man, it didn't really screw us. Because we would have got screwed by this card anyway. But then again, if the holy man were still there, I would have went a different way, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. Then he's going to move to the closest us or victims. But if there's a tie, he'll go to the most victims. So we have one, two, or one, two, three. So he's obviously going this way one space. He's only moving by one. 
and no kills. Oh my god, we got lucky. Whoa. Sort of. The fact that this moved that one guy away from him, oh, we got lucky. Can I go back and buy different cards now? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Screw you, Hans. Screw you, man. All right. I think we open it with the sprint. One. Or do we open it with a walk? Or a focus, actually. Man, our horde didn't go up either? Yeah, we open it with a focus. Get in the green. And if we can move here, we're with our girlfriend. She'll give us an extra die. On the sprint. And maybe we can actually save a few victims and then even get back. I don't know if we can get more out of there, but... I just need to get our girlfriend out of there so she doesn't die for sure. Maybe I'll just get her off the board. Because if we go up by 5 horror, that's really bad. But I need to save two more victims, so maybe I don't save her yet. Yeah, because she doesn't have to die first as long as she has some meat shields, right? Okay, let's roll two dice. Come on, just one, two success would be nice, but one, one is all I'm asking for. Two is, two sixes. Thank you, dice gods. Those bribes may have worked this time. Uh, Tommy, thank you for subscribing. Thank you so much. So we're going up two time, and we go down uh, to one on the horror track here. That's a good focus. Uh, super focused. All right, let's walk. Let's walk. Three dice. Three dice. Okay. One, two, four. Mm-hmm. I could leave it with none. I actually could go down to one health. Super risky, super risky, but it would give me an extra die. And I like my extra dice. So I am going to take no successes because we just really want to move one. We're now with our girlfriend, who's a religious nut bar. Uh, we're going to lose a health down to one. And we lose two time. Now she gives us the bonus of an extra die roll. And let's save some victims and try to flip our card. Then we're like, then we can get aggressive, right? As long as we're not losing all of the time. Sprint. We have rerolls. So it'll also be a good time to atone. Actually, yes, let's atone before we leave, right? Maybe we can get three successes on the atone. So one die from girlfriend, one die because we're living on the edge. Um, and then three dice because we're in the green. And we have a mitt full of cards. All we need to happen is this not to roll a bunch of ones and twos. That's all. That's all we need. You hear that, dice gods? If we can get three successes, we're down to one on this track. And we're laughing. <laughs> this is their suitcase. Watch the language. <laughs> Shook. F yeah. I mean, final girl. Yeah. One, two, one, two, five. <laughs> Frig, man. Do we roll it all, re roll it all for two time? Because one success will just move this down by one. Like, that's useless. We need at least two successes. Yeah, we're re-rolling it all. This stupid game. Uh, re-rolling all dice for two time. Yep. Three successes! <laughs> Decrease Divine Wrath to one. It's a little expensive, but we did what we had to do. Now we sprint. Now we sprint. It's 
Still five dice, right? Nothing changed. Girlfriend. Living on the edge. Living on the edge. Uh, and then we're in green. Five dice. Okay, a six, a four, some ones and twos, not impressed. Uh, but with that second success, I can make it a success. Uh, let's go sh short rest, weak attack. I don't know if that's the right call. I mean... Yeah, sure. Uh, so two successes only reduces time by one, uh, but we get to move three spaces. So we're gonna take two regular victims, one, two, we'll save both, uh, gives us two time back to five, and then gives us an action card of max two cost. I'm thinking of taking a sprint so we can get back to our girlfriend. Okay. And then we get the third space, right, of, of our original sprint. I'll go back to here. Or should I be taking a guard, actually? Mm, maybe we don't get greedy with the sprints. But I do have a walk and a sprint still. So let's, let's think through this. If I take the sprint, and we're rolling, uh, we're actually rolling one less die because we're not with our girlfriend which maybe was a little risky. Oh yeah, we get to flip, we get to flip. So now we do extra damage, by the way. Whenever you're in the same space as an enemy and inflict damage, do an additional, okay? So we're like, we're ready to kill. We got a whip bonus damage, we got Lori's just pissed bonus damage, and if we got our girlfriend with us, we got an extra die, but if she's with us and she gets killed, uh, we're in trouble. So like, we're, we gotta start thinking like killer damage, right? Like we assume the killer's gonna move right to the Sacred Grove, I'm not gonna be able to get all of them out. I don't think I should try to save more actually. I, I think I should leave those victims for, for girlfriend protection and my protection as like meat shields. But if I can get some of them off the board, imagine that is less bloodshed. But I don't think I'm ready for defense yet. Uh, so, I could take a guard. We gotta assume he's only attacking once still. We're still kind of early in the terror cards, but he could attack twice. Thoughts? Thoughts? Uh, not too short. Not short rest. Isn't he one away from the victims? Yes, he is. That's correct. But I can take a two cost card. So what I, what I was thinking is if I take Sprint, I go in there, I grab my girlfriend and a regular victim, and I leave. Okay? I just leave with them. And I keep them with me all the time. So that way if he only kills one victim, he doesn't kill the girlfriend, he kills whoever's with me. Or, we could have a showdown right here. The only problem is I don't like that they're all in the sacred zone, right? So I need to get some of them out of there. So if I had one, two, three, Three movement. One, two, three, and a walk. Or do I just get in there and stay with them? The only problem is all these victims in here are going to make this go up and fire off worse. So I need to get them out of there. Oh, I need to get them out of there. So if I just move in, take my girlfriend on one of these, there's less in a sacred space. That's my plan. But I can just walk in there. I can walk in there. So what am I taking? I'm taking a guard, right? I'm taking a guard. Nope. I'm taking a sprint. I don't trust I'll get two successes there. Although we could get a juicy retaliate going, right? Uh, is anyone away? What do you, what do you get if you save more victims? Uh, additional time. Additional time. Oh, you can't really see there. 
Uh, yeah, additional time, which is nice. It's nice, but here's the thing. Here's how I value. With this girlfriend in play, um, because she's so powerful, if she's alive, she lets me roll one additional die, right? But if she dies, five horror. Like, I'm in trouble if that happens. Like, big trouble. So, I'm kind of greedy. I want to keep her alive. The best way to keep her alive? Have other victims that get eaten first, right? Right? So, to me, these victims are worth more to have them get attacked first before her. Or, do I just go and save her and get her off the board? I lose her bonus. I lose her bonus, but I don't have to worry about the risk. But man, rolling those extra dice, oh my god. But then he might just kill her. Yeah, I should probably get her off the board, right? Yeah, I should probably get her off the board. Maybe that's the play. She'll give me an extra time at least. So if that's the case, I take sprint, right? To try to save her and get her off the board right now. Or I, I go in this space and I stay there. I let him come in. There's no way he kills all these victims. Then I have her there for some like retaliate attacking business. Because we can wreck this guy. The only problem is uh, if I have to lose cards from hand. Oh, and these guys will probably panic too. And she would panic out of my space. So yes, I'm taking sprint. I can't stay in the sacred area. That's so bad. Okay, so I'm here. I took sprint. I'm playing sprint. Okay, done. Uh, so I roll three dice, plus I'm, I'm living on the edge here. The only problem is if he moves to me now, I have no guard or anything. But I'm just hoping he only moves one at a time, so he shouldn't be able to reach me if I'm down here. I don't know. Two successes, F yeah. Drop a time down to four. We're gonna move in one, two, three. And here's the question, do I just save her? Get her out of here? Probably, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I don't know if that's the best play, but I'm gonna do it. So we get an additional time twice, so we're back up to six, and we saved another victim. Less for him to eat, less, less for our track to go up, because we got some people out of the sacred groves. No liability anymore. I, I will miss that extra die though. We, we barely, barely got to new ye. We barely knew ye. Technically I don't have to save her right this second though. Uh, what I could do is use her one more time before I dump her. <clears throat> uh, I could play a focus, right? Because I can save her at any point. So let's use her on a focus. So her die, three dice for green, and we're on the edge. Five dice on a focus. Hoping you roll a 666. Here's your Lucy. Here's your Uber, Lucy. Get the heck out of here, this is Patrick. <laughs> All right. Two successes. We're going up two time. Boom, boom. Uh, and dropping a whore by one. Beautiful. Uh, okay, now you gotta go. Get the hell in this Uber and get out of here. You ain't gotta go home, but you best get the hell out of here. All right, that feels better. And then we're holding two cards in hand. I don't think I care about walking right now. I kind of want to be as far away from him as possible. And if I go here, that's the same. Uh, it's actually closer, so I'm three spaces away right now. So I'll stay there. I don't want to get attacked right now. Um, but I could throw away... No, we'll just hide. We'll hide, we'll hide, we'll hide. Um, actually, we could get to eight. I'll pitch the walk for one. Yeah, we'll just build up a nice hand of uh, juicy cards. Yes, I'll keep the close call, though. Eight to spend. Uh, we're going to take... Eight to spend, eh? Retaliate and Furious Strike. Yep. Yeah. 
That's our hand. That is our hand. We're just holding. We're building up. We're building up. Although I could have taken critical blow. But then I would have not. I could take critical blow and a guard instead. When are we going to have six or more again? Critical blow is so risky though. Sure. Okay, back to six. Uh, he is gonna go. It's Lori's girlfriend, not Rob's, technically. <laughs> Listen, yeah, yeah. It's really funny to jump in on my lunch to hear Rob talking about his girlfriend. Hey, oh, crap. Uh, this is awkward. Gotta go. Just kidding. Hey, Mel. It's not what you think. It's not what you think. Uh, don't worry. Both of them are not interested in men. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Although, am I truly a man? I don't know. More of a boy. Uh, broke up with Lucy. <laughs> Sending her in the cab. All right. Uh, okay. Killer stabs, no one's home. Terror card, terror card. How bad are we gonna get here? Oh no, he wants fresh blood. So he's just gonna go after the, like kill one victim here. Yeah, yeah, goes here, kills one, goes up, oh, and we unleash. So we lose a time and increase the track by one. Go down to five, and then they, uh, they panic. Six is this direction. Okay, okay, sure. I was hoping to go this direction, but I would need a five. Oh, I see. They only escape on like three, four, five, or six. So if I rolled a one and a two, it wouldn't. They wouldn't even leave. Um, but I wish, I wish they went there, so it's a little closer. But I, I have time. I have time. Five of it. Okay. Nothing to do in the upkeep. Back to our turn. I feel like I just chill. Um, yeah, I'll keep it. So with five, I'm gonna buy a close call. And a retaliate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want to get in the space with the victim. So maybe. Maybe He's only still hitting for two. So a single success on retaliator guard is enough. So that's an educated risk. Uh, I want to keep weak attack. I'm thinking focus. Focus. 
Yeah, we'll leave a focus behind. Do I short rest too? Like, it's, I don't want to mess with the dice I'm rolling though. Four dice is nice. Okay, so we got our 10 cards. Reset. He will stab. He will terror. No one will notice if I break off one of these pretty branches. Increase divine wrath by number of victims at divine spaces. Zero. Then we unleash, uh, which I lose two time, down to four. Then we place two new victims. Oh, God. Two new victims at the Holy Groves. Oh, right where he is. Right where he is. What the F? So now he's not going to move. All victims adjacent to the Holy Groves move there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. This is shenanigans. That is crap. Oh my god. Now I wish I had the girlfriend still because I could bring her in there and she'd pretty much be safe. Uh, because there's so many other victims now. Now I gotta worry about these idiots. Oh my god. And that means his bloodlust now can like shoot up. And then he's gonna hit for three and I'm in trouble. Alright, Hans. You bastard. Alright. Let's do some stuff. I don't have sprints, so getting them out is not like really an option right now. But I mean, I could try with some walks and we see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, let's just start with walking. So three dice plus I'm living on the edge still. So that's four dice. Oh, long rest is needed. Come on. Are you serious? No way. You're probably right. You're very right, actually. Uh, that is next. Okay, we'll think about that next. One success and a three. Pitching cards, maybe? So I can get right in there? Short rest and focus. Lose one time down to three. Move two spaces. We're in. I could walk just to get some more out. That could be a possibility. It could buy us time, but we would need the two successes again, which I don't trust to happen. So I could just do a weak attack while I'm here. Could end our turn, though, if I miss. But it will do three damage, probably. Oh, I would lose a health, though, and could die if I miss. Yeah, that's probably not the right play. I don't know why I held this. That was dumb. This card stinks. We need, like, two successes to not die. Oh, man. I see, I see. So then should I pitch this instead? Yeah, let's go the... Oh, I got Critical Blow, actually. That'll probably end our whole turn there, right? We need to do 12 damage. Could do... Four or five from this card. Four or five. Four from this card. Or sorry, three or four from this card. Hmm. A couple ways to go here. Do I pitch this or this? Okay, uh, do I spend the critical blow right now? Could end my turn, I'm stuck in his space. It's probably bad, because he could attack me once, then attack me again, and I'm, I'm in trouble. I feel like I, maybe, I have rerolls, I have cards to pitch. 
but it could kill me also. But I don't want it to just sit in my hand forever. Oh man. All right. I roll four dice. Is that worth it? I think so. I think so. Yeah, let's do it. This could be game ending right here if we miss. But it'll free up some space in my hand. I'm not gonna, I shouldn't sit on it forever. We need two successes, would be amazing. We got three, holy. So three damage plus one from the whip plus one from Lori. Uh, five damage. Nope, oh, that's six. Five damage. So he's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. And we drop a horror, which will give us a time back. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, now we run. Run! Or walk. Sorry, we should walk! Do not run. Do not run. All right, let's get out of here. Maybe we can save a couple of victims if we get two successes again. Two successes. Yes. One, two. Uh, I'll save them first for two extra time. And then I lose a time. Holy man, that's good. That's a good turn right there. Do I short rest? Probably. That means I'll roll one less die though. Or do I just go for the long rest? Let's just short rest. Four dice on a short rest, here we go. Two successes, boom, two health. Yep. Now at least if he gets one hit through, we won't die yet. But if he kills this victim, he goes up to three damage anyway, so I mean this two health might not save us. Oh, okay, we're uh, stopping there. We're not pushing our luck anymore. Five money to spend. Five money. We've got to assume he's just going to stay where he is, so we would need to move twice to get him. Uh, if we assume... I could just take another chill turn, stay here. So let's buy a Furious Strike. And, oh, I guess we could have pitched gain of money back, but it would put us to six. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's pitch this close call so we had six. Uh, so we can get Fury Strike and a Sprint. And we'll take this Focus. Back at six. Short Rest Walk, Critical Blow. Weak Attack, Walk, Focus. Yeah, now, now we're cooking. We are cooking. Oh yeah, because he's going to kill anyway, like 100%. Yeah, yeah. He's going to kill 100% right now. He kills. Goes up by one. Do, uh, this goes up. Increase um, Divine Wrath by number of victims on Sacred Spaces. Zero. Uh, okay, that's great. And what else? That's it, right? Okay, Terror. Semper Buffo. Hello. He just keeps coming. Well, he's coming for us, uh, but he only moves for one. He's still slow. He's still at one. So we'll just move him like this. That's the only way he can go. And then he tries to kill. No one's home. Oh, man. Oh, juicy. OK, I think we got him here. I think we got him. Our turn, because we can sprint. I just don't have a ton of cards, so like if I need to pitch cards, it's gonna be rough. And I also need to keep cards in hand that are, are blue for later, but I'm debating just doing a little sprinty sprint, because it's the only way I can move right now. I don't have a regular walk, which is kind of sad. But if I sprint, I get to a space, and then I can slap him with a furious strike. The problem is I'm only rolling three dice on this, but it's like, 
I probably should have took a distraction instead and just stayed where I was, let him come to me. Oh, I didn't lose the horror. You're right. You're right. I did not. Oh, man, that changes things. Yeah, I forgot about this part. I forgot about this part. I, like, just blurred right over that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Edward. Uh, okay, so we're only rolling two dice? Yeah, that's not good, actually. Yeah, I wish I did distraction instead. Um, because, yeah, that would have been a smarter play. I just assumed he was going to be in my space, probably. Oh, yeah, I forgot about long resting. Whoops. I should have taken long rest instead. Oh, I was dumb. But that's okay. Yep. I'm doing it, though. Let's go YOLO. Uh, two dice sprinting. A four. Mm. Yeah, we need that success. Oh, I should have focused first. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I forgot I had focus. Let me check my hand first. Yeah, yeah. I should have focused first. Sorry, guys. Wow. Okay. Pitching two cards. Yeah, this is a bad play. Probably just get rid of sprint and close call. Take the success, drop, lose the time, and stop there. Yeah, I just stop there. I can't I can't be aggressive anymore. Yep, let's just wait for him to come at us, I guess. So that's it. We have five. Um so let's get I don't know if long rest do I go with long rest now? Go distraction. I don't know, guys. If he gets some damage through, if he gets two through, that's fine. This is dark power again. Uh, oh, he just attacks everyone. That's fine. Thinking distraction. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Okay, reset to six. Uh, he stabs, no one's home. Okay, so this time he's just coming at me and trying to stab me for three damage. And we play retaliate. And even if we roll one success, we're still alive. Three dice, because we're in green. But if we get two successes, which I highly doubt, we could hit him for four damage back. And we can only get one possibly unless I do a big reroll. Is this where you do the reroll? Or do we just go with one success and we... No, let's reroll all for two. Yep. Okay, one success could be two. Yep, I think it's okay. Let's get rid of short rest. I know, I know it's bad. I know, I know, I know. And a walk. Uh, so that's two successes. So we ignore all damage and we hit him back for four. 
One, two, three, four. He's down to three. He's down to three. Okay. Okay, that's his turn. Uh, we still have tarot cards, no upkeep. Our turn. Uh, unfortunately, a Furious Strike without a reroll, a little scared. But I think it's what we do. Oh no, R R distraction maybe first. I mean, this will drop Horde even if we fail. And we need our money up enough in case he double attacks. So we'll need to buy a guard. So we need cards for that too. I don't want to get greedy with the distraction though. Okay, hold on. Could we win here though? Uh, three damage more. So if we just get one success on a Fury Strike, we do kill him. And the crazy part, it will end before we drop our horror. Uh, because if we kill him and he survives, uh, we end our current phase and we're into purchasing before we drop a horror, which is kind of okay, but maybe not. So maybe. No, let's go distraction. Let's, let's do it. I don't want it just sitting there, but it could be bad. Three dice. Okay. One success. I'll take it. I'm going with the one is fine. Uh, I'm not pitching cards. So that is drop a whore by one and we go up one time to five. Okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, now Furious Strike. Three dice. I got cards to pitch, but no rerolls. So we just want one, we just need one success. Please, 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 please. We got one. I think that's all we want. Because it doesn't matter. Because with one success, we do one damage, two damage from the whip, and a third from here. He's only got three left. So we wipe away the three. And now, so we're resolving the damage dealing. But we haven't got to the second icon yet, because you do it from left to right, I think, right now. Based on what happens here, we either win the game, or he's alive with health. But you end the phase right away, like instantly. So we don't get the rest of the card happening. But it would end the turn anyway. I don't think it's worth pitching cards. It's, it's not needed. Here we go, here we go. Let's see what we pull. We win. Yeah! Very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah, we win. Take that, Hans. Get out of the sacred groves. I'll leave Lucy alone. Even though I probably should dump her religious ass, but uh, yeah, other than that, uh, everything's okay. GG's, we win! Nice, 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 nice. Yeah. Yeah, lots of weird ones in this one. Uh, the holy man. Screwing that up, I thought I lost instantly. Uh, the girlfriend, keeping her around. I probably could have kept her alive based on how it worked out and a whole bunch of uh, victims got added back. And I was on the right side of the board when that happened too because I was here. But imagine that happened when I was like over here somewhere, right? And we were dancing with the killer over here. And victims got added there. That would have definitely messed with things. We didn't even get to his dark power, which is good, because he would have started stabbing victims faster. The Wraith track, man, we got, like, that atonement was huge. It, it was expensive to get done, but, man. Sonia, thank you for believing in me. Sonia says, told you that you would win. Never in doubt, says Yogi. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, when the holy man died, I instantly inside, uh, I just was like, we've probably lost, but let's see how far I can survive. But I didn't do my usual of getting super risky. There were some choices I could have made where I could have got super risky in it. Like that turn where I was worried about going all one way, where I, I was assuming we we're going to lose all the cards in our hand. So I bought cards, uh, trying to leave cards behind that I could buy up on the next turn. So we could have a decent next turn. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it was a little risky, but I could have risked it more, but I played it a, like kind of, there's Rob's usual way of playing, which is super risky, especially when we feel like we're gonna lose, then I go all out. I, I play like so dumb, but it, if it pays off, it's like gets us back into the game. And uh, then it makes me look good, right? 
but uh, and you guys think I'm all good at this game, but really I just I just go YOLO when I'm when I think I'm gonna lose, right? But if it's going well, then I play a little less risky. Um, but this time I played like in the middle, and it, it did pay off. It did pay off. We got some good luck, and and some timing on the cards were okay. So next he would have done horrific. Oh, it would have ignored this actually because there would be no victims left. Oh, that would be a crazy one to get early in the game, right? That would have wrecked us probably if that came up early. Oh, wow. Imagine he saw this one too. Oh, man. What was out of the game? Oh, another fresh blood. Taking souvenirs. Mm, wow. Yeah, that could have been bad too. So if he had, if he had this one or this one these two if they came up like you know turn one and two three and four two and three something around there uh those could have totally wrecked us more than the holy man could have more than the holy man i think for sure we would have been a way worse spot but the fact we kept i think the fact we kept the victims out of the burial grounds uh when the cards came up asking about them uh led to him not going as crazy over here i think also kept our horror in check yeah, that, that feels like a good win. That's a good win. Yeah, I, this is a tough map for sure. Tough map for sure. Because the burial grounds. The burial grounds plus this track just like mess up so many things. They just, they just add that extra pr couple priorities that you have to worry about when you're playing to make it not so linear. That is crazy. Like think of how different it would have been if we got hit with any of these discarding action cards happened, right? Those could have wrecked entire turns, but... I mean, we had a couple wrecked entire turns, but uh, not because of that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was my first time ever playing on Sacred Groves without the whole killer that also has a meter like this. Maybe that's just too insane. Maybe it's a little tame. I don't know. Without it. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Showed up for lunch. Yeah, yeah, exactly what I said. Yeah, we, the fact we don't have both uh, uh, Wrath cards is huge. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't mind with just one. It's, it seemed okay. But again, the scenario was like, we're still we're only playing with a couple cards from this set. Um, so it doesn't manipulate us as much, but we still have this to worry about. And the Atonement, like that Atonement. Oh my god, the timing on that. And it just it worked. Like we got to our girlfriend. We were at one health left. Like, it all lined up so we could get the three successes. And that is, I think, was the play of the game right there. Dropping this from 10 to 1. Before the 10 fired off. Like, mind blown. Amazing. Uh, yeah, that was a great one. I like that scenario, though. I'm sure if I played that, like, 10 times in a row, I'd probably only win, like, two of them. But I definitely will take the one for one that we got. <laughs> Put it in the books. 100% victory rate on this scenario. Done. Mark it. So the next one is scheduled for Friday. So in a couple days, uh, you can set reminders for it already. And then the last episode of this series, playing through Hans the Butcher's story, is scheduled for Halloween. Uh, so next Tuesday. So if you want to set reminders for those, check the playlist. That's down in the video description. Uh, also, tomorrow we're playing another scenario of Eldritch Horror. If you want to join us for that, playing some three-player. And we're back on the weekend playing our final two scenarios of our Arkham Horror, the living card game, Innsmouth Conspiracy Campaign. Assuming, well, we're at least playing one. Again, it could always end and we don't play the last one. You never know. But uh, yeah, the final two episodes are scheduled already. So you can join us for that if you're interested. But other than that, I don't, I don't know what else, man. I'm just kind of in shock that uh, we won that. Kind of uh, sitting here in shock. We didn't have to buy pepper spray. We got rid of the girlfriend uh, without having her die or really using her too much. And the holy man, the holy man got killed. I still can't believe it. Yeah, I can't believe we won even with the wraith or the, the wrath, the wrath track and the holy man dying in the worst way. Can't believe it. Anyways, final girl. Fun as always. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Um, oh, Yogi says, just wait till you play an Arkham campaign and run into a secret night scenario. 
Uh oh. Uh. Uh. Uh oh. I mean, secret. I would have predict that those could happen in like the repackaged campaigns. I wouldn't think that would happen in the uh, prepackaged ones, the separated old old school release schedule. But it could though. Anything's possible. Um, but you could also just add a scenario pack in and then it wouldn't be a secret ninth scenario. You would have put it in yourself. It does? Oh god. Well, if that happens, we'll be playing, I don't know, Monday? I, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. But now, now it might happen. Oh no. Okay, anyways. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. You didn't do those things in that campaign. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Oh, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. All right. Let's uh, let's just keep it there. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. All right. I know what you're talking about. I get it. I get it. All right. Maybe one day in the future. Maybe. <laughs> That's cool, though, that that exists. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the support. And especially thanks to all these people for supporting the channel. Uh, I'm much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow or Friday in the next streams. Either way, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.